everyone. Here it is. It's Monday, January 25th, and I'm at home. If you can't tell by the background, that's because of the weather today. Yeah, didn't go into work today. And you're not at school, so we're both in the same boat. I have a story today that you probably have heard before, but let's take a look at it anyways. I'm in the book of John. And I'm in chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. <coughs> Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin... Let him be the first to throw a stone at her. He again stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first until only Jesus was left. With the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said then neither do I condemn you. Go now and leave your life of sin. Now there's a couple of things that I always think about when I read this. And I think, so she gets caught. What about the guy? Where's the guy in all this? Obviously he's guilty too, but only she gets brought. <coughs> well, at that time, men could have more than one wife. They could. They could have more than one wife. And they could have mistresses. But a woman could not. It was okay for a man to have more than one wife. But not okay for a woman to have more than one husband. So this woman gets caught with this guy. And so her punishment is she is supposed to get rocks, rocks, thrown at her until she dies. Wow. That's harsh, right? So they bring her to Jesus as a way to trap him to see what he would say about all this because Jesus loves people. And they're thinking, oh, what's he going to do? What's he going to do, right? And Jesus, he starts to write in the ground. And a lot of people say, well, what was he writing? What is he writing in the ground? My thing is, is what's he thinking about? I wonder what he was drawing in the ground, but I wonder what he was thinking about. Is he thinking about these Pharisees and what they're doing? And it makes me think he's more concerned about the Pharisees than he is about this woman. Because they're so intent on trying to catch him doing something than they are about this woman. They have no care for this woman. They, they don't care about her. But they care what he's doing. And that makes him, makes me wonder what's going on, what he's thinking about. Yeah, he bends down to write in the in the dirt. But sometimes we all need those moments, right? Something frustrates us, annoys us, angers us. And I don't know, maybe that's what it is. Is Jesus is just like Okay. I just I need to count to 10. I need to count to 10. And I don't know if that's what's going on, 
but it makes me wonder what's going on in Jesus's mind. And I have this from one of my devotionals and I wanted to read it to you. And it was today's devotion. And it's from my Grace for the Moment by Max Licato. And this is what it says. When we come to Christ, God not only forgives us, he also adopts us. Through a dramatic series of events, we go from condemned orphans, like that woman, like that woman in the story, with no hope to adopted children with no fear. Isn't that so like the lady in our story? Here's how it happens. You come before the judgment seat of God, full of rebellion and mistakes. Because of his justice, he cannot dismiss your sin. But because of his love, he cannot dismiss you. So in an act which stunned the heavens, he punished himself on the cross for your sin. God's justice and love are equally honored. And you, God's creation, are forgiven. But the story does not end with God's forgiveness. It would be enough if God just cleansed your name. But he does more. He gives you his name. That was the script. That was my devotion for today. And it goes so perfectly with our story. Did you catch little pieces in there? God forgives us. But more than that, he adopts us as his children. And then he gives us his name as children of God. Now, when someone is adopted, they have usually a different name. But when they're adopted, they take on the name of the parents that adopt them. The same is true of us. When we are adopted by God, when we say, God, I want you in my life, we become his children and we get to experience his full forgiveness. Isn't that great? You have a wonderful day and enjoy looking outside at the wind blowing the snow around and thinking about how warm and toasty you are in the house. So you have a great day and I love you all. Bye.